welcome to what day is it thursday's edition of cracking the cryptic i think it's thursday isn't it gosh i lose track of days anyway what have we got for you today we have got an extraordinary looking puzzle which involves no numbers at all at least at the start it's called post office panic and it's by tesseralis and it seems to be some sort of puzzle about um, numbered rooms which is a, a rule set I'm beginning to see more and more over on the discord server it's one I did a puzzle I think it had a rule set around numbers rooms a couple of days ago um, but it's not something I'm terribly familiar with so this could be quite an interesting solve what I can tell you is that the feedback we've had about this puzzle has been incredible um, we've had a couple of people saying this is one of their favorite puzzles of all time so it should be absolutely magnificent but I have to confess I have no idea how difficult it is either I did try and look on Logic Masters Germany but it hasn't achieved a rating yet over there so I can't actually see um, Anyway, we'll have a go at this in a moment. I have two or three things to mention first. Um, if you enjoy pencil puzzles, and if you like puzzles at all, if you're watching this video, you must love pencil puzzles, then you may enjoy the video that we released earlier on this afternoon where I take on um, the best of the best pencil puzzles from our Discord servers, um, approachable pencil puzzle series. Um, so for those of you who don't know, basically every day over on Discord, uh, one of the great authors, Shy, Jovial, Tiganis, Freddie Hand and Eric Fox um, produce uh, an approachable pencil puzzle and everyone can have a go at it and they're sort of suggested times for depending on how expert you are. Um, and the, the, those authors over there kindly let me know their, their best puzzles for the last few months. So I've recorded um, a puzzle by each of them this morning. Well, I, I didn't record it this morning. I actually recorded it last night. But um, the video's gone, gone live. Uh, this afternoon and yeah it's definitely uh, worth checking out it's, it's worth having a go at the puzzles that's all I'll, I'll all I'll tell you they are magnificent um, now if Sudoku's more your thing you might like the video we released yesterday in which I took on a puzzle called Yin Yang by Jesper which took me two hours to solve one of the hardest puzzles I've ever tried in my life and one of the most brilliant so that is an incredible incredible puzzle to have a go at if you have a lot of time now, next things to mention, um, Domino Sudoku, which is our new app, has been submitted to Apple. That doesn't mean it's out yet, but it does mean, providing they accept it, which they should do, um, it should be out very soon indeed. So you might want to refresh your app store uh, at, uh, periodically over the next few days because there should be a new app out very, very soon, which is tremendously exciting for us and we hope for you. Um, now, next, birthdays. There are loads of people whose birthdays are today, including two 23 three-year-old birthday so Aisha um, your partner Jesse got in touch with us and I think you've turned 23 today and also Ed Edward uh, your partner Amy got in touch and I think you've you've not only turned 23 but you've just graduated so I hope that you both have loads and loads of cake today and a very special day obviously but also Tom You've turned 30, which is a very round number, and your, your, your partner Naomi told us that, so I hope you have a great day. And finally, Vic Fearing, um, your friend Eliza got in touch with us, uh, and I have to read out very specific wording about your birthday. 44 years old, good times. I hope that means the right thing to you, and I hope obviously you have a splendid day today. Now, next. Um, if you are a patron of the channel and you have been battling with Joseph Namer's Sudoku Hunt, which is our July monthly reward, well done. That is a good way to spend your puzzle time because all of those puzzles, and there are quite a lot of them, 13 in all, they are magnificent. Um, then, um, well, some of you have actually managed to solve all of them. And in the last 24 hours, the following submitted correct entries. So very well done to Johnny Bolton, to Juhar Chuis. Chusa, might be saying that wrong, sorry, uh, Pascal uh, Padelko, um, Sarah Driscoll, uh, Lapsed Memory, Steve Marseille, Jamie Stearns, Alex Van Overloop, uh, Mark Elders, Ned Bartlett, Chris Remo, Ilka Siki, Siki, uh, double I pronunciations, I'm not very good at, I'm sorry, Ilka, if I'm saying that wrong, uh, Olimar and Pat Holly all all correct brilliant work um now 
that's all said and done. Let's get on with post office panic. And I will read you the rules. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by an X must contain digits summing to 10. So those two cells sum to 10. Um, clues outside the grid indicate the digit which has to be placed in the nth cell in the corresponding direction, where N is the digit placed in the first cell in that direction. Each letter represents a different digit, and the grey table is provided to help uh, you record digits you discover. So this is just cosmetic. So once we work out the digit E, we'll write that in there to, to remind ourselves what E represents. Now, let's just understand what this means. So this, this rule set is saying that, let's say we knew, let's say we knew what E was. Let's say E was eight. Now, if E was eight, what we're saying is in this column, depending on where the eight went, let's say the eight went in the middle. Uh, why am I on letters? I don't want to be on letters. Um, maybe it knows. Maybe the software somehow knows that there are letters in the grid. Anyway, let's say this was an eight. Then I think what, what this rule set is saying is because this is in the fifth um, cell from this direction, this would have to be a five. I've just realized this is not right, is it? Because then the corollary of that would be that this cell also has to be a five. So that's not right. Let's move this eight around. Let's move the eight to there. So if the eight was here and it was E, then this should be a six because one, two, three, four, five. It's the sixth cell from this direction. And this would be a four because it would be the one, two, three, fourth cell from this direction. So that is how this rule set works. Very odd indeed. I will admit that. I haven't got a clue how we're going to do this, but we're going to have a go at it. So do have a go yourselves. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's hope I'm not bad. And let's get cracking. Um, so, I mean, this is weird, isn't it? Because actually, without, without knowing any digits at all, how do you even get a handle on... There must be something to do with... Ah, what digits are restricted in a numbered room puzzle? The digit... Is, it, is the digit one restricted? So the one... This, this column has a whole bunch of letters in it. But it doesn't have all the letters because it doesn't have an I. But there must be a one in this column. Let's just imagine that was a one for a moment. What's that telling us? That's telling us that from this direction, that's, oh, it's indexing itself. That's what it's doing. Yes, okay. So what that's saying is that from this direction, we find the first cell and that cell contains the digit E. So in other words, if this was a one, it would be telling us that E was a one. So we now know the following absolute bombshell. I is not the digit one in this puzzle because I think this column contains every digit, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, yes, except I, and there must be a one in this column. Oh, A is not one, but is that right? I think it is. Oh, is it right though? I'm not sure. Now, now I'm confused. Well, I can Well, I'm not sure about whether A can be one, but what I think I can say is that that can't be a one, and neither can this be a one. Because if I if I do put one here, I'm saying A has to be one by the logic we did earlier. Oh yeah, that's weird. That's weird. So actually, I can't say A isn't one. Oh, that's so strange. This is playing with my head. Because then obviously I can make that an eight, for example, and put, oh, hang on, I didn't want to, I didn't mean to coincide it with this A. Let's make that nine instead. Oh no, because that's going to put a one there, and that's going to suggest D is a one. Oh, <laughs> hang on, let's make it six. So that's suggesting there's a one here. So let me think about this now. So 
is it actually the case that a can be 1? So this, this would be saying that a was 1. This would be saying in this row, 1 needs to be in the 6th position. So actually, yeah, a can be 1, even though it's got it's got two instances of itself in that column. That's weird. Okay, you can see that this is playing with my head already. But because that, right, all we can say is that because there is a 1 in this column, one of these letters is the 1. And this, if we were Mark, Mark would now pencil mark this cell with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But luckily, I'm not pencil mark. <laughs> I'm simple Simon, so I'm going to do it a different way. Um, now, right, what about, that can't be by mistake or, yeah, look down here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So what's that telling us? So that's telling us that A in this row, wherever it goes, let's just put let's just put A there. Let's make A two. If A is a two, ah ah no right okay that's interesting right. So what you can't do actually is put yes right. What we're now learning is that these two digits and these two digits and these two digits sum to 10. And that's because we're indexing from both sides of the grid to the same number. So whichever one of the, let's make this A, just for the sake of redifying something. Well, that would be saying that this digit here, which is indexing the, the cell that A is in, that would have to be a three. And then from this side, that would have to be a seven. So 3 plus 7 is 10. Now, that's why this cell couldn't be A. Because if that's A, you have to put 5 into two cells in row 2, and that won't work. And that logic actually therefore applies for all of those cells. In every one of these cells, you cannot put the, the, clued, the clued digit that's on both sides of the row. And that means that 5 cannot go in any of these cells in columns one and nine. And that means we have an X wing on fives. Good grief. Good grief. So that's actually, that's amazing because that is almost, you know, now we're sort of actually, we're able to write some actual numbers into the grid, even though that the, we have no idea what the letters represent. So now, either the fives are in those two positions in the finished grid. What's that doing? So that's telling us I is here. Oh, no, hang on. Well, it is saying that, but I'm just, I'm more interested, I think, in D, aren't I? Because that, yes, yes, okay. So look at that. You've got that going on that side, and then the other side, you've got that going on. And I think this is really important because, well, let's keep going with this. If these are fives, then we are simultaneously being told from, from these two D's perspective that this is the digit D because that's what this column is telling us. D is in the fifth position, which is here. But in this row, we're being told that we have to index to D from this cell, but we know this cell is a D, so it must be a one. But that means, the thing that's interesting about that is that how does that logic change if instead we zoom our fives around the other way around? Well, because these Ds are symmetrical with these, well, you know what I mean, symmetrical around a rotate, a reflection around the middle of column five, this was this is saying, a five here is saying that this cell is D. Actually, I know what I could do. I could switch to, that cell would be D but that's telling us that D is also therefore indexed from this position 
which is the first position. So D is 1. So D is 1. What we don't know, weirdly, is how this X-wing unwinds. We know that we know that we know that one of these squares is a one, <laughs> but we don't know which one. Um, oh, but we do know that because D's because there's D on both sides of the grid, and these two cells must sum up to ten. We now we've now got a one nine pair in row five. <laughs> this is completely absurd. Um, so, hmm, okay. So now, hmm, what does that mean? I know that D is one. So hang on, if I know D is 1, don't can't I use the logic we did earlier? If I know that D is 1, yes, I can. Oh, it's, this is such a strange puzzle. Um, where do I put the 1 in this column now? And um, what we said earlier is wherever we put the 1, we are basically defining the digit we put it next to. So if we were to put the 1 there, we were saying that G is now a 1 because the, the, the rules are telling us that the, 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 the digit G is in the first cell from this direction, which is itself a 1. So now we know that D is 1. Even though we don't know how the X swing unwinds, well, maybe we do now. We know that that must be the 1 in this column. And therefore, that must be a 9. And now I want to say that that must be the 5. Yes, it must be the 5, because from the column's perspective, this D is cluing into the 1, and that's in the 5th position. So we get these two digits, and we have unwound the, the X-wing. And now we get an A in that cell. Oh, this is, this is so peculiar. And now E is in the eighth cell, not a word I thought I'd ever say, uh, and the eighth cell down here is an E. Oh, and the 10 minus eighth cell from this direction is also an E. So, yeah, but so there is a relationship between these two cells now. I don't like that red. I'll use orange instead. Um, because 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 we know that these e's are the sort of complement of each other. So you know if this is if this is the eth digit, and if this is the digit e, then this would be a four. Well, this would be a four, and this would be a six. We know these two squares add up to ten. So once we know this is a, we know this is ten minus a. So there is a, a mathematical relationship between these orange cells. But until we know what a is, we're not going to know how to use that. Um, but, ah, I know, I know what I is. I, it's telling us is in the fifth position, which is a nine. That is a nine. So I've got two digits now. Oh, I put I in there. No, I wanted to put nine in there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there we go. I've done it properly now. One and nine. And I bet I can work out what five. Oh, this doesn't mean A is five, does it? No. Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. No, sorry, that was nonsense. Um, do we... Right, so how do we do more then? So now... Oh, okay, so I can just... I can just do the logic on ones in this column, can't I? Yes, this is this is the D. Is that right? I think it's right. Oh, I'm confusing myself now. I really, this puzzle is doing my head in. 
I worked out that D had to be 1 because I was wor I worked out that these clues were always cluing in to one of these cells thereby positioning the digit D in the first position from the rows perspective so D is 1 so where does 1 go in this column no it doesn't quite work does it if I put 1 here no, it does work. It does work. If I put 1 there, then this is saying from this perspective, B is in the first position, which is a 1. But we can't have a digits. We can't have the same number being represented by two different letters. So that would be nonsense. So the only, yes, OK. So the only place that the 1 can go in this column is here. but we don't have a letter here. Well, no, we don't have a letter here, but if we did, it would be a D. Um, we get dab as well as bad. Right. Okay, but we know that the... Oh, yeah, 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 okay. So now I can place nine in this column. And that's because if I put 9 in any of those cells, what do I have to put in the complement cell over there? I have to put 1 in. Because we know that across the grid, double A, double B, etc., these are adding up to 10. So now I could, because I, because I can't put 1 in any of these, I can't put 9 in any of these. So that's a 9. And that is telling me that H is in position so H is 5. H is 5 we've now got. So we've now got 1, 5 and 9 ascribed to letters. But, ah, that's really annoying. So H and I, we've only got one clue of. So knowing these ones actually hasn't really, it doesn't allow us to put any other, other marks in the grid. So... Good grief. Okay, so what do we do now? So, oh, we don't have this clue, so we can't use that. I'm tempted to say it's got to be about A, because there seems to be more A's than anything else. There's, there's, what's that, eight A clues. There's three B clues. 3C clues, a few D clues, but I think we've used those now. Now those E clues are quite interesting. They're forming a cross with this middle. It might be the E clues we have to think about because we do at least know something about A in the column that has the E's in it. F. No, F is very unhelpful. G and G is slightly more helpful. So there's a massive discrepancy in terms of the, the digits. Basically, A has the majority by miles. So there must be something about A that we can do. And we've got, we know that the digit A is here. Right, okay, so I know for these two cells which are cluing A in these columns, they, these cannot be high numbers now because that would put A, would put two A's in box box two. You know, if any of throws three are A, I've got two A's. So this cell and this cell have to be, well, they have to be two, three, four, five, six, seven, don't they? They can't actually be five, I'm noticing. Not seven either, sorry. Seven is gonna reach those cells. Two, three, four, or six. I've I've taken one out of here because if these are one, that's telling us that A is equal to one, which is wrong. We know D is equal to one. So this Ah oh no. Bobbins. Okay. So one of these is a two or a three, cluing an A into one of those cells, and one of these is a four or a six, cluing A's into one of those cells. Ah, ah, 
that's interesting, A is not here. Because if A is here, what's this digit? And the answer is 10 minus A, because these two digits add up to 10. But we know that cell, that orange cell, is 10 minus A, because we know that these are two E's, and these add up to 10. So A, so that's not 6. Right, so this, so A in the middle box is in only one of three positions now. So can I get rid of it from here? And then I'd know it was in one of those two. So why is this not an A? That would mean that this was a six. We don't know these clues, so we can't get any grip from the top of the grid. Hmm. Or, or maybe the idea is I get rid of four from here, and then I get an A in one of those. So why does this not equal four? Why can't this be A? That would mean... I don't know. I felt like it was doing something semi-interesting, but maybe I'll just put A in the corner of these cells. I think I can do that like that. And then A is in one of those... Oh, hang on, I pressed the wrong button then. A is in one of these cells as well in box um, in box eight. Okay, so what else do we know about A's? We know that we know that these two digits add up to ten, and they aren't one nine. Which is a very, very modest deduction. So two, three, four, six, seven, or eight. I mean, I'm not even sure that's worth pencil marking, to be honest. Two, three, four, six, seven, or eight. Yeah, in fact, that's just not, is it? That's. In fact, I've managed to put nines in there as well. Two, three, four, six, seven, or eight. Okay. Ah, all right. I can get rid of one thing from this. If this is A, i.e. if this is a two, then that's got to be a two as well. I get two twos in this box. So this cannot be A. So that cannot be two. And that logic seems to say, yeah, there's so much symmetry. That's the logic, it's the same there. So that also cannot be two. And if these can't be two, they also can't be eight. So now we know that A is three. It's either three. No, no, we don't know this. Oh, no, 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 I'm not talking nonsense. Well, we don't know anything about the value of A. All, but we do know these digits are either three, seven, or four, six. Yeah, I've got to I've got to separate in my mind the value of these digits that sum to ten from the actual value that we're cluing into because if this was a four six pair, we're saying that A is in one of those positions. Oh no, A is ah ah no, that's wrong. A right. Now I've got to be very careful with my nomenclature here. A is here. So A cannot go in those three cells in row two. So these cannot be four and six because that would be saying A is in one of those positions. So so A, well, we're not, we don't know the value of A. We, well, actually we do. No, we don't. <laughs> we know A is not three or seven anymore because A is either in that cell or that cell in row two because it's, it's being clued into by this three, seven pair. So now A... So, hang on. So A can't be one, five, nine, and we've just found out it's not three or seven, so A is even. Wow, that feels like it's worth knowing. So this cell is even, two, four, six, or eight, which means that this cell is even, two, four, six, or eight, because these two add up to 10. Okay. So, 
So if this was a, then this would this would be a two. So a would not be two. And this would be a three. And this would be a seven. I don't know what that means. Um, so how do we do this then? So A is even. This That feels like a big deduction, doesn't it? So A, but this, how do you even use that in this column? don't know ah oh, ah oh, hang on a moment hang on a minute hang on a moment that's weird a is in those three cells none of which can have a five in, in their position here. An A in box, where are you, where is A in row five? Where is A in row five? A cannot be here, it cannot be here, because, because these can't be five, because of this. A doesn't seem to be able to be in those three cells because we worked out that these cells don't permit it. Yeah, and that's because of that five. This can't be a five. Well, this can't be cluing into this position because this can't be a five. So A is, that's A. That, not Q, that's A. Does absolutely, does absolutely nothing. That's weird. Oh, maybe it restricts that cell then. Right, so this, oh, it would, oh, no, it does. No, it does, I'm wrong. If this is A in row five, that's not A. So if that's not A, that's A in row two. Good grief. So now that's a three, because it's cluing the position of A, and that's a seven. This is just weird. It's remarkable, isn't it? Um, but... I now advanced my knowledge of what A is at all or not? Y no. Yes, a little bit, a little bit. Because this is A, this is this needs to be a two. And that means A cannot be two. So now A is just four, six, or eight. A is four. So this cell is four, six, or eight. This cell is these cells are four. I'm not sure it's worth pencil marking. I've, I, I haven't got any four sixes and eights in the grid. What's this telling me then? This is telling me that A so wherever the A goes here it's a four six or an eight. And that's A. Oh, that's A, so that's not two. Let's get rid of two from this cell. So this is so if this is not two, this is not eight, because it's the complement of the E's crossing the grid. So four, six, or eight. Can't can't really see. I'm tempted almost to put the options in, or put a you know an example in down here just so I, so I can see what it looks like. If 
if this is a, this is 4. This is a, this is 4. A, this is 4. So this is not 4. So this is not 6. Oh, there's something wrong with this. There's something wrong with this. Um, Let me just try and get my head around this. There's something I don't like about what, what I was just seeing in my head there. Let me just try and understand it. So. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't work. I can't quite articulate why this doesn't work, but, but oh my goodness, some sort of ambulance emergency. Um, well, let's make this a six, just for the sake of example. Right now, that, so we're saying a. This saying a is six. Now this is now a four, which is so far so good. But now. Now we've got a real problem with this cell. Because remember these are, once we make A a 6, this is a 4-6 pair. But because we've made A a, well, because we've made A a 6, A in this, in this box now has to go in this position. So now there's a 4-6 pair in those cells and this cell. So it doesn't work. Now what I'm not sure about is does that, so maybe the idea is that we can get rid of four and six as options for A and that would leave A being eight, which would be massive. Eight here would put two here, which would mean there would have to be an A in the third position. One of these would be an A. Yeah, if we make this a 4, if we say A is 4, we can't put A there, can we? Because that would be in the 4th position and we get two 4s. So if we make A a 4, we have to put it there. Because again, if we put it here, if we're saying A is 4 and I put it there, this would have to be a 4. So if this is a 4, this is a 6. But now A, yeah, it doesn't, it does, it's, it's weird. It's very weird. But because it's like a, a skewed X-wing type thing, but because I have to put the complement, because I have to put A in one of these positions, and the positions in box 5 that the complement A goes in is the 4th or the 6th position, I get, I get, I get the four and the six in these cells when I need this to simultaneously be a four or a six as well because I've made a four or six. That's what happens. So it doesn't work. And that means that this is not four or six, this is eight. So we now know that a is eight and that's massive. So we know this is two. We know E is now here. This is E, uh, let me put that there. We know A is 8, so that's 8. We know this is 8. We know that these are not 2 anymore. So we know that the, the, the cluing of the A in this box now has got to be 1 into one of those cells. Oh, and in fact, look. Oh, no, that's not right. I, thought, I was thinking the 6 was very exciting, but I don't actually think it is. Ow, bother. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't think, I don't think I know. I 
don't think I know which of these is 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 A. Wow. Okay. So, so now we can do what exactly? We now know E is here, and E, I know nothing about. <laughs> I know that. Oh. Well, I know, hang on, I know E is not three, don't I? Because don't I know one of those is a three? Because it must clue into an A that lives in this box. Yes. Okay. So that means I've got three in one of these positions. So E's options are now limited to two, four, no, six or seven only. Two, four, six or seven. So this is a two, four, six or seven. And E in this row then is two, four, six, or seven. Oh, but we don't know anything about. So maybe we stick with eights. There's an eight in one of those two cells, which we can do like that. Now, is there some reason that that, do ah, that doesn't work. That can't be it. Yeah, that's beautiful. That can't be an eight. Because remember these two, Th these two cells sum up to 10 because they're both indexing B. So if you put eight there, you've got to put two there and that seems to fail. So this is eight. Oh, this is lovely. Right, and that's in the third position in this column. So I get another digit. So now eight is in one of these two cells and there might be a way of working out which of these. This means two is in one of those two cells because F and G are both opposite each other. Oh, no, no, a, a is already in row seven. Sorry, sorry, we could have done that instantly. So this is this is actually eight. This is actually two. Two is in one of these cells by Sudoku. Eight is in one, eight is in one of these two cells by Sudoku and it's got to be this one. And that means this, oh no, <laughs> A and C are not adding up to 10. Um, so we can't do that. Well, we do know, though, I suppose, that if this is 8C, oh, we know two things. This A is cluing that cell, which is a 9 then, and this is now a C, because it's being clued by this 8 clue. So there's a C here. Now, C, we know absolutely diddly squat about. We know that it's... Well, is that true, actually? We know C is not five digits. Do we know any more than that? No, I suppose we do know that C is not one as well because we've got D as one. So actually we know six digits. So actually C, I think C, oh, it's not seven. Woo C is four or six by Sudoku. This cell sees those digits and it can't be one. So C is four or six. So that's four or six. C is four or so, ah, uh, oh, what's that? Does that mean if C is four or six, does that mean you can't put four or six in that cell? It does, doesn't it? I think it does. If you put, if I was to put a four or a six in this cell to clue the value of C, then I would have to put a six here but I'd also have to put a four or six here because we know these two have to add up to 10. So that doesn't work. So this digit and this digit now are not, are not fours and sixes. I just left that in there. That was very dangerous. Um, so, so actually, what can this digit be? It can't be one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got to be, it's got to be seven or eight only. Oh, th that means it could be A. That's a bit surprising. So this has got to be two or three. So this could be A, can it really? I suppose it, oh, well, maybe. Hang on, let's put those in there. So there's now a two look, because, because there's an eight in one of those, there's a two in one of these. So C in this row is in the seventh or the, one of those two positions, which is interesting, maybe. 
in the top row we've actually got six digits we just have to put in four six and seven and that's not seven so b in this column is in one of two places um okay and what do we do now we shall argue about uh this could be another two hour video <laughs> This is very hard, actually. It's very hard to get my head around. It. Well, to get my head around it in the sense that I haven't, I do not feel I've got my head around this at all. So, hmm. um, how do we do this? I've got some eights in the grid. Got quite a lot of eights actually. But I've got six eights, but I can see that the eights that I've got remaining are in a sort of a nice pattern that doesn't look to me like it's very resolvable. Unless there's some reason that I can't. Don't know. Okay, so I think we might have to resort to some Sudoku in a minute or two. I don't know whether I should be labelling these with their options as well. Do we... Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's, let's start doing Sudoku. We know those two digits sum up to 10. Now, this one actually is restricted because it can't be 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, or 9. So what can that be? Ah, this is good. Right, here we go. Here we go. This is what I should have looked at. From a Sudoku perspective, it's 4, 6, or 7 only, I think. But that it can't be 7, look, because that's going to plonk a 3 here by the 10 rule. So this is 4 or 6, which means this is 4 or 6. That's not telling us the value of B, though. That's just telling us the position of B in the row. In fact, it's telling us B is not 4 or 6, because B is now in one of those cells. So we need to put B in there, like a good B. And we need to now... Oh, we've got a 4, 6 pair here. So this is 1, 7. Ah, right. Right, don't know what that's doing, except that now surely B is very restricted. What can B, right, let's use, let's use the greys to work out what the B in theory could be. It could be 2, 3, 4, it could be 6 or 7. They are the options for B that are still available. Now, we've just worked out it's not 7, because it sees a 1 and a 7, and we've worked out it's not 4 or 6, because it sees those as well. So all we've got to do now is work out one more thing it's not. Ah, I've done it! I've done it! <laughs> There's a two in there! So B is here, apparently. Oh, this is beautiful. So that's got to be three. B is three because it can't be two in this box. So, oh, well, I thought that was going to eliminate loads of stuff. But B is th three. Okay, so there's a three in one of those. And there's a three, ah, look, there's a three in one of these, and that makes this not able to be three. So that seems to have to be two, which plonks eight over here. Eight is the value of uh, A, so that's not A anymore. Um, this is not two anymore by Sudoku. Okay, great, well maybe nearly great um, sorry I just need to think now <laughs> I just need to think give me a moment or two to think all right let's do this column we've got threes I oh, know we haven't where does three go in this column it can't go here because we know B is three so that's got to be the three which means this square is a four or a six and that's in 
the value, well, it's not the value of E, but that that's opposite the E. So this is a 4-6 pair. So, oh no, I've got a deadly 4-6 pattern. Is that somehow going to get resolved by, it probably is going to get resolved by some sort of nonsenses, isn't it? Um, to do with this funny rule. So, so uh, no, I don't, I'm not saying, uh, okay, I'm saying E is in one of those cells now. So I've got an A, I've got an A, E pair in this row. And E cannot be four or six then, because it sees four and six in its row. So this, so E is two or seven. Which is very interesting, but unfortunately, I'm not sure it's good enough to tell me what I need to know. I've got an AE pair. So E is two or seven. A is definitely eight. What? Oh, look, in this column, I haven't put seven in. That seems to have to be seven. Oh, it's opposite the three. So we would have, we could have got that anyway using our, the powers of Fness. So now we know F in this row is in exactly that position. So we can pencil mark. Let, let's actually do this now. I think it's worth it. We, I think we should pencil mark the values of F and G and see what we can see. Oh, especially as I've just seen that G has a two here. That's a G. So G, G is not only restricted by graynesses, it's valid, it might be restricted by these cells looking at it. So G in theory can be two, four, six or seven only, but it can't be two or seven. Oh, this is magnificent. So G is four or six. This is a four or six. And that gives me a four, six pair in this box. It means that F is two or seven to make this work. So F, F can't be, F can't be seven. F can't be seven. There's a seven looking at it. So F is two, I think. Four, six. That seems to be the implication. F is two. So that's a two by Sudoku. There's a two, three pair in box, um, box two, and which can be viewed also as an FB pair, <laughs> um, uh, if you prefer that sort of thing. Now, look at this row now. We've got all sorts of pairs in it. The only things we have not got are fives and nines. So they seem to have to be, you've guessed it, five and nine. That, in fact, that sells a five or a nine as well. There's a four, six pair in this box. So this is a five, nine pair. F is two. So we've put the two in here. There's a two here. Oh, where does two go in the middle box? One of those two cells. And that means that that's not a two. And we get the F in this box here. So hang on. And if F is two, we know E is seven. And if E is seven, E is in right, one of these two cells, which is the pair with, with A, which is eight. So this is now a seven, eight pair. Oh, come on. How does that not do anything? That's really mean. That's really mean. Uh, come on. What's it done? Don't know. Okay, let's check the rest of this row now because it must have done something. One, three, five, nine. Mm. Okay, that's disappointing. I really think it might not have done anything. <laughs> one, three, five, and nine. Am I really going to pencil mark all that in? I will do. I will do. One, three, five, and nine. That's not nine. But that's not nine. And that's not three, because the three is in one of those two. So that's restricted. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, look, there's a five looking at this as well. So this is very restricted.
This can't be one. Three, five, and nine. Ah, okay. Um, do we know what C is now? We know C is four or six. Ah, that's beautiful. Right, here is a bit of logic then. What's this X? This X domino is not seven, three, it's not eight, two. And because there's a C, which is a four or a six in one of those cells, it can't be a four, six pair. This is a one, nine pair, which means this is not one or nine. That's now three or, so there's now a one, three, five triple in row six, which means this square is a nine. Let's put that in. Which is not doing anything at all. That's an I, isn't it? Nine is I. So we're not going to learn much about the world from that, I don't think. Disappointingly. Um, G in this column, G is a four or a six. So where are we putting four? Oh! Oh, this is beautiful. Right, okay. This cell. Where are we putting G in this column? And the answer, a G is a 4 or a 6 according to our graynesses. Now, this is a G according to this 2 So we can't put G in any of those. G is not 9. So there's a G in one of those two squares. But if we, we can't put 5 here, so this must be 6. And therefore, this must be G, which cannot be six and has to be four. Oh my goodness, that is that is ridiculously clever. Not of me, I hasten to add, but of Tesseralis. Good grief! Oh look, now now I've got yes, and now that's confirming me with the C as six. So so C is six, and this is eight. So that's that's that clue. So that's a six, that means that's a four, that's a six, that's a four. Here we go, here we go. Um, why did I say that? Why did I say that? I thought it was going to crack. Um, that's a four. This, this is not six anymore. So this is a three, four pair. This is a one, seven pair by Sudoku, somehow not resolved. All right, what are those squares then? They are four, six, and nine, and there's a six here. So that's a six, that's a four, and that's a nine, wow. Wow, okay, well, that was better than I was expecting. So this digit now is, by Sudoku, it's one, three, or seven, except there's a one there, so it's three or seven. A three or seven is a B or a E. Oh, I see. It can still be a B. Oh, no, it is a B. It is a B. There's a four here. So that is a B. And B is three. So that's a three. Now, that's quite helpful. That's one. That's five. I don't know how long that's been available for. It might have been there for a while. Apologies if you've been getting cross with me about that. But I hope that you will agree that this puzzle is not the most straightforward thing in the world ever. Uh, that's a seven, that's a seven, that's a one by Sudoku. This box needs one, three, and five. And there's a three here. So that's three, that's one, that's five. These squares have got to be three and five, I think. So that's five, that's three. These squares in the middle are now two, four, and six by the looks of things. That can't be two. Two, four, and six. So this is a five by Sudoku. doesn't seem to be resolved um, but I suspect there's all sorts of indexing I've not done yet um, hmm. <laughs> where should we look for that four there that should be cluing a three which is there right so that's a three that's a two so that's a two which is lovely this three is giving us the four and the three at the bottom which is cluing the a so the A is here, which A is eight. So that's eight, that's seven. That's seven, that's six, that's six, that's four. A now must be here, apparently. 
these two squares have got to be 6 and 9. That's 6, that's 9 by Sudoku. That's 9, that's 1, that's 5. That's 5, that's 9. These squares have got to be 1, 4 and 9. So that's a 4, that's a 9 and that's a 1 if I haven't made any errors. And then these squares... Oh, look, I could have just got E ages ago. What's E? 7. That's a 7 by magic. That's a 1 and that's a 5. And therefore, <laughs> I haven't got a clue if this is right. Now, the software is not going to have a clue either. Good grief, it actually thinks it does know. I don't know how it... Sven is some sort of genius, isn't he, that he's made it so it understands this. I don't know if it's picked up the fact there are three by three boxes, but that's really good news if it has, because that suggests that I have actually completed a valid Sudoku in the in the middle of the grid and if it's a valid sudoku it's quite likely to be correct <laughs> because to have got this out by accident does not seem very likely to me let's have a quick flick through so a is eight so that's that seems correct that seems correct b was three that's correct c was six that's there d was one i do remember that e was seven which is there that looks good F was 2, that looks good. G was hopefully 4, yes. H, is, H was 5, that looks all okay. 8 here should be cluing into a 6, which it is. This was the beautiful, that was my favourite bit, that 6, 4, that was so lovely. In fact, no, that's not really fair either. There was so much clever stuff at the start. I mean, it's mad that you can solve this just with some letters. And this rule set as well, because this rule set is strange. Um, four and three gives us the eights there, so the X wing on eights. The five is gluing the nine. So it's, oh, all of these, well, hopefully these will work. In fact, we can check these will work just by having a quick look at whether they're adding up to ten and approximately. They do seem to all work, I think. Yes, that's gluing that. B was 4, clueing to 3. Starting to remember the numbers now. E was 7, wasn't it? So yeah, I think this is right. I think it's right. <laughs> what an incredible puzzle that is. That's absolutely remarkable. Really, really beautiful. I can see why people are saying it's one of their favourite pu puzzles ever. I think I'd need to get it a bit clearer in my head to appreciate appreciate it properly i found it very difficult to understand and i kept making mistakes in my mind about what things were showing what but it's it's really remarkable I mean, i'm looking forward to the comments on this one i always enjoy the comments especially when they're kind but especially also when the puzzles are strange and weird and wonderful because i think that the audience gives a fresh perspective as well so hope you enjoyed that let me know in the comments and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic